Now we want to get to our other top story. We're waiting right now to find out if NASA will try to put the Artemis 1 rocket into space at the end of this week. Yeah, NASA scrubbed that launch this morning primarily because one of the four engines had a cooling issue. We brought you live team coverage of this historic launch attempt on Eyewitness News this morning. Now this here, take a look. This is a live look of the rocket on the launch pad right now. The 322 foot space launch system rocket was supposed to launch this three test dummies aboard on the mission to propel a capsule into orbit and then around the moon. Channel 9's Nick Papatonis is live at the Kennedy Space Center right now. And Nick, I was here with you listening into that briefing this afternoon from NASA. Administrators gave us some hints about the future of this program. Yeah, they're still keeping that next launch window that opens on Friday afternoon on the table. It's just going to come down to how fast engineers can figure out how to put pressure on that engine and force the liquid hydrogen fuel through it. This is a brand new rocket. It's not going to fly until it's ready. Speaking to reporters after a long and frustrating morning, NASA leaders said their teams would reevaluate the condition of the Artemis 1 rocket Tuesday after getting some rest. The agency scrubbed its planned Monday morning launch after multiple issues piled up, including weather, communication problems, and most importantly, one of the rocket's four engines failing to cool down before launch, raising the chance it would go into shock when it was fired up. We talked at our flight readiness review about the engine bleed. We knew that that was a risk. Engineers did not have time to test that system before the countdown began. A hydrogen leak earlier this year sent the rocket back to the assembly building for repairs, cutting a dress rehearsal short. This was a really important attempt for us. We talked about that after wet dress four. There were a lot of questions of, you know, should we have rolled back, tried to do another test? Uh, we we felt and, and still feel like going for today was the right thing to do. Administrators are not willing to take serious chances with their long anticipated $4 billion launch. Artemis 2 is scheduled to have people on it, meaning the agency needs to bring the rocket into space and around the moon when T finally hits zero. We're going to play all nine innings here, you know, and, and we're not ready to give up. So the next launch window opens approximately 1245 Friday afternoon. If they miss that one, there is an opportunity next week as well. If the problem proves too complex to solve, they could choose to send this rocket back to the VAB for more repairs. At Live at Kennedy Space Center, Nick Papantonis, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. All right, Nick, thorough report there. And thousands of people who went to the Space Coast hoping to see the launch went home Maybe tired, but certainly disappointed today. Channel 9's Q McCray continues our team coverage, and he talked to some of the folks who traveled to the coast trying to witness history. So unfortunately, here in Titusville and Parish Park, nothing but long faces right now. As you can see, people are already in their cars trying to make their way off the island. What started as a night overflowing with anticipation and excitement ended with a morning full of disappointment. As 8.33 a.m. passed and NASA's Artemis 1 was still on its launch pad. Well, I'm kind of, kind of, uh, not kind of, I'm really disappointed but not surprised. Like thousands of others who lined the Space Coast expecting to witness history, Sandy and Pam Cohn arrived at Parish Park the night prior to get the best spot. Tomorrow is our anniversary, so my wife and I were hoping for a, to see some fireworks today. He wasn't alone. Calvin Jones drove 500 miles from Atlanta. I was hoping it would go today. I took the day off. How are you feeling? Kind of sad. Yeah, a little sad. disappointed. Yeah. These schoolmates slept outside overnight. They had their doubts. Once it was held off, because it was supposed to be like a 10-minute hold or something, and then it just kept going and going and going. And I was like, mm, okay. And I was like, probably not going to happen. Now it's time for them to pack up and head back home. Good news for some of them is that the next window is on Friday and then on Monday. And some of them have that day off. So they'll be making their way back here to Parish Park to hopefully see, again, history in the making. But until then, that's the latest here in Titusville. I'm Q McRae. Back to you guys inside. All right, Q, thank you. And next Monday, Labor Day, Vice President Kamala Harris was among the 200,000 spectators on the Space Coast today to watch the Artemis One launch attempt. The Vice President and the second gentleman, Doug Emhoff, flew on Air Force Two to the Kennedy Space Center early this morning. 
an early arrival and early departure. She also toured the Artemis hardware before launch. And in a tweet after the scrub, the vice president said, quote, in part, the attempt provided valuable data as we test the most powerful rocket in history. Our commitment to the Artemis program remains firm and we will return to the moon. Now, of course, when Artemis does go up, it will add to a very busy year of rocket launches on our space coast. Ahead of Artemis, 35 of the 47 successful orbital launches this year from U.S. sites have been from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station and the Kennedy Space Center. Florida had 31 successful launches in all of last year. That was one more than 2020 and a big jump from 2019 when there were 16. And of course, you can count on us to continue monitoring every development as NASA looks to troubleshoot issues with its mega moon rocket you see here. So it can blast off from our Space Coast. You can find out more about the mission and what else is ahead on our website at WFTV.com.